play for Scotland of all time is Ian McLaughlin and the Mighty Mouse. Mine's is Gavin Haftons. Greg Laidlaw. Greg, Greg Laidlaw. Yeah, we won. Today my favourite rugby player is Stuart Hogg. Uh, Stuart, Stuart Hogg, Scottish rugby player. I've had a brain, a brain, please. Uh, Rich Green. We added one word. Female. 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 Yeah. Oh. Not sure. <laughs> And your female rugby player? I don't know any female rugby players. <laughs> I don't know any actually, darling, but hey. Uh, female rugby player, can't tell you, sorry. Me? Oh, well, yeah, her. I don't know female rugby players, I'm sorry. Oh, I don't, don't know any female. female rugby. Well, Heather Lockhart no, plays for rugby. Heather Lockhart plays for Scotland. Oh, no, like, she does. Yeah. She yeah. used to. Heather Lockhart. Kylie Walker and I live in Glasgow. I play golf or professional golf on the Ladies European Tour and um, I've been playing golf for just about 11 years now. Yeah, badminton is my, my full-time job I guess um, and it's a pretty, it's a pretty good job, you know I get to travel the world. Yeah, I just finished my degree in uh, filmmaking and screenwriting, um, which I just completed in December there. So uh, I was really happy to get that finished. You know, so there was a lot going on at that time, and I just felt like I really had to, you know, take that moment to put golf first. We are the sort of leading charity in Scotland to look at equity for women in sport. There are still areas that we have to work on to make sure that they are equal and that the same opportunities are given to the girls as well as the boys. I'm Moira McGonagall, I'm the Chief Executive of Scottish Women in Sport. I wanted to find out how was the situation of women in sports regarding opportunities, remuneration and future prospects. I think Things are changing very slowly. I worked in women's football for 20 years and I was aware of the, the lack of equity in terms of the opportunities that were out there. But I think now within school, in that environment, opportunities are similar. I think sometimes that can really affect children who show good, good signs of, of like good potential in sport. I think sometimes parents can almost get in the way a little bit and it's great they've never pushed me too hard or, or expected too much so I've always had the right balance of support and encouragement. I think the more women's sport grows you know from that younger kids level the more people want to do it as they get older and I, th I think you know that's one of the main ways that women's sport could could grow and, and have more opportunity. When you were young the opportunities were the same um, I'd say the opportunities were the same, yeah. I came through um, lots of squads and I mean I was trained with boys but um, yeah, I'd say I had a, a good amount of opportunities to, to get into the national teams and get my first cap. Diamonds ain't surprising that the love that you have lost is in your mind. We go, we'll take the highs and lows. It's fantastic. Maybe Middle Eastern countries certainly have stigma maybe around women in it, around women in sport, but the, the countries that we go to support our game, our, our golf, our tour massively. It's always the big prize funds in these countries because you have these the governments want to promote women in sport, they want to promote women's well being. It's really evident when we go to the likes of Dubai and Abu Dhabi and Turkey, even Morocco, like they they feel really passionate about getting, you know, giving women that that opportunity. Muchas chicas, muchas mujeres que hacen deporte, eh, se están marchando a otros sitios. Se están marchando en balonmano, a Dinamarca, en baloncesto se están yendo incluso a Corea y ahí o a Dubai. En, eh, hay la campeona del mundo de Europa de karate, Sandra Sánchez, eh, 
eh, la campeona del mundo de karate se eh, la han contratado en Dubai para entrenar a, la, a, la, a los nuevos equipos de allí. Hostia, y aquí no creo que casi nadie conozca a esa mujer. So, what do we need? I think absolutely we don't have enough role models at the top for young girls to see so that they can aspire to be that, so that they know that there's a, a, a pathway there for them in terms of coaching, leadership, elite sportswomen. Um, you know, the press are very poor to pick up in these things and publicise them. You look in a paper on a daily basis and you struggle to find something about women in sport. So we need to look at having more women on boards in the sports in Scotland so that decisions are made reflect both girls and boys and young girls know that they're welcome. We need more women coaches in all sports. We need them out there to be leaders to show that there's an opportunity. And we need sports to stand up and ensure that the remuneration that guys get for playing sport is the same that girls get. Barberton is very fortunate. We've, uh, I'm sure, was a, a bit of a struggle a few years ago, but uh, women had equal pay in Barberton, so it's, uh, I think we've arrived at a really good point. But now we all play best of three sets to 21, so we all play the same amount of points, same amount of games, so it's justified that we get the same amount of money. I know it doesn't happen in a lot of other sports, so I'm really happy that it happens in Barberton. In golf, you know, the, the difference in prize money is still quite big, you know, the men do earn a lot more money on the course than the women, but I definitely think that's that's changing. The, the women's game is getting a lot more publicity, it's getting much more attractive to watch, the quality is much better, so I definitely think with that, with more interest and more fans, come more sponsorship and more money to be earned for the ladies on the course. I think it's a tradition in terms of sport. Sport was a male domain. Not that long ago it was a male domain in, in every aspect. And certain sports are coming up to the plate now and, and they're realising and understanding and supporting the women athletes. There are other sports that are just a little bit behind that. And I think what we have to do is work with them. Why do people say there is less quality in women's games? The, the quality of the women in the is outstanding and I think it's becoming closer to the men's game. Just everyone, each year, everyone's getting more powerful and more accurate, stronger, faster, fitter. And uh, the longest games in Bampton um, are women's singles games, typically. In recent years, the LET has, has grown massively. Um, prize funds are, are going up and a lot more interest has been generated in women's golf. I think it comes down to the media. Um, I think I heard something like 5% um, of um, newspapers sports section is women's sport, which is just not enough. And the more you see these names and the more you see these faces, the more you're going to engage and the more you're going to recognise them and you'll want to learn more about them. But if it's just mentioned one time, then you'll just glaze over it. Scottish women's football um, are just probably a game or two away from qualifying for the Euro European Championships in 2017 in Holland. Um, it's one of the best kept secrets that it shouldn't be. It should be put out mainstream, let people watch it and follow it. Well, to be honest, um, well, when, I, when I saw that, oh, I think it was on Twitter, somebody put it up, I was surprised and it made me laugh, if anything. I, I don't quite see myself that way, but I guess being um, in sport, you, you may be looked at and judged in certain ways, so yeah, it's, it, it doesn't bother me at all. I find it funny and maybe blushed a bit. I have to say that when I started off Scottish Women in Sport and I googled it, I was absolutely disgusted with what came up. I just don't think it's right that we should Google it and we're getting the hottest women in sport or the best looking women in sport. It doesn't matter what you look like and that's again another reason that girls are put off participating in sport. Do you ever know anybody that's finished playing a game that looks hot? Yeah, they look hot because they're sweaty because they've worked out hard, but not in the way that these magazines or these websites would like to infer and I think we have to do away with them. And I'm glad to see that now when I do Scottish Women in Sport, we're there um, along with other organisations so we need to just start flooding it with more and more info about women in sport and make sure these ones stay at the bottom of the pile. We ran a very successful International Women's Day campaign, Pledge for Parity, this was 2016 and ours was Pledge for Parity in Sport so again raising awareness through social media 
In fact, we were trending on Twitter that day, it was so busy. It's just a really good way of, almost like a fun way of, you know, highlighting, hey, you know, women play sport too, and, you know, we love it, and, you know, we feel passionate about it, you know, like, and almost just get the message out there. Things out with men, but they do put things out with women, um, which is very frustrating when you're, you know, in the middle of a three-set match. Um, so, yeah, just to look at women for their achievements rather than their, their aesthetics. Recognise the achievements of the athlete, regardless of the sport. That should always be the number one priority.